The following is intended only for mature audiences. Open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. Tim Mac. I'm kind of a rascal. Kind of? Yeah, I like dude. to cause trouble in a comical fashion. Well, what kind of trouble? Like, the kind of trouble we did when we were kids, or is this a new kind of trouble? Oh, no, nothing trouble? illegal. Well, nothing we did when we were kids was illegal. Oh, Oh, Neil and I did tons of shit that okay, was illegal. Okay, you guys did, not you and I. I have to speak from our experiences together. Okay. I don't know what the hell you and Neil did. Set a house on fire. No, that was his brother. <laughs> I have never committed arson. So anyways, we were out shopping, and we went to Walmart to get some stuff. And then we went to Target and Andover to get some stuff. And we spent so much time looking at toys that I forgot to pick up peanut butter. God damn it. So then on the ride home, I'm like, shit, I need peanut butter. Let's stop at another Target. Isn't it amazing when you go from Walmart to Target, the differences in like store layout, what they have available... And even, most definitely, the clientele that oh, yeah. show up there. It's amazing, isn't You'll it? see a lot more people wearing pajama pants like day clothes at Walmart. Yeah. And in true meta fashion, many of those same people will be wearing pajama pants that are still on the rack that they recently purchased at Walmart. I can't wear pajama pants outside of the house. It doesn't feel right. Okay, so I wanted to tell you that bit of information so explaining why I was at the particular target I was at. Okay. To get peanut butter. Nothing else. It was the wife and I and four out of our five children. Because Chi-Chi was at a birthday party and we were killing time before we had to pick her up. So we're walking from the parking lot and there's that, you know, that driving lane that separates the storefront from Mm -hmm. the parking spaces. Yeah. And we're crossing there. And we're crossing right in front of where the stop sign is. And there's a car approaching. I'm like, okay, it looks like they're going to stop. And we start walking into that, that driving lane and then they kind of California roll the stop sign and then dynamite the brakes and then pull ahead two feet and stop. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this shit? So just to be a wise ass, I kind of stopped and looked at them just because I wanted to see who was inside. It was getting dark. I couldn't see the windows were tinted. But I was just hoping to get a look at what kind of dumb fuck was going on. Like, were they on their phone? That was my theory. Male, female. Yeah, yeah. something. Old, young. So anyways, they're driving past us, and I just kind of keep looking, and I'm like, turning my head as they keep going. And then I turn around, and I go to walk in the store. So you stared them down. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, my face was partially covered because of a mask. I'm in the store about five feet, and then I hear this. Hey, what you staring at? You got a problem, motherfucker? And I'm like, hello. <laughs> Opportunity is knocking, and my wife's like, oh, great. So I stop. And I look at him, and I'm standing there, and I lift up my coat, and I take my right hand, and I make a crotch chop like the Generation X would in the 90s in wrestling, and then I turn around and I go to walk away. Jesus Christ, So that gesture means suck my dick. (laughs) And as I'm walking away after doing that, I hear him saying some other shit. So then I just, as I'm walking away, I don't turn around and look at him. I throw two high middle fingers up over my shoulders and just kind of dance away. Jesus Christ. And then I went, this is not going to be the end of this. Mark my words. I didn't say anything to the wife. She keeps walking and I'm walking with her. And then some fat woman obstructs my path. So then I have to stop and wait for her to move so I can get past this tall rack of hand sanitizer. Something about my inner Jason Bourne detected the need for this. I grabbed one of those bottles of hand sanitizer. It is roughly the size of a can of Mountain Dew. It has a squirt top. And as we're walking to get the peanut butter, she's like, what the fuck was that about? What did he say? I'm like, I don't know, but you saw what I did. So whatever. She's like, what's with the hand sanitizer? I'm like, I don't know. Something might go down. I got a feeling. I don't know. And I check the top and I pop it. It pops easy. I unscrew the top. I'm like, good. It's already open. I don't have to pull back a label. I screw the top back on. I get the peanut butter. She's like, 
you want to look at toys, don't you? I'm like, well, we still got eight minutes to kill, right? Yeah. You're timing this pickup of your daughter to the minute? <laughs> I told her what time I'd be there. If we would have come early, she would have cried. She hasn't been to a birthday party in a long time. It's one of her favorite classmates. And anyways, we go from the food side of the store to the very back main aisle. Not the very back aisle, the back main aisle. And then we cross all the way to the other side of the store. And then we're walking down into the toys. The wife and I separate. She's looking at stupid baby toys for the littles. And I'm like, I'm going to go look at the big boy toys. And I get to the intersection of where the middle main aisle of the store passes through the sporting goods and then intersects with the toys. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I hear two people start yelling. And I turn and look, and it's the guy that I did the crotch chop to. And a woman who I can only assume is his mom, or he's dating an older woman. So they're both yelling about what my problem is, and she's like, why are you staring at us like an officer? (laughs) Like an officer? How, How does an officer stare at you? I don't know. I guess these people are speaking from experience. Probably. And then I says to her, well, here's the thing. See, I was walking, and then you pretty much blew the stop sign, and then I wasn't sure if you were going to keep going, because you bucked forward. She's like, but nobody hit you. Your ass didn't get hit, which bitch ass. Or something of near equal eloquence. And I just said to her, I'm like, well, I didn't know what the fuck you were doing, and I didn't know if you were paying attention. So, sorry about your feelings. And then the guy starts saying shit to me. He's like, yo, and then you pointed down and you told me to suck your cock, man. That's disrespectful as hell. I don't know you, so I don't have to respect you. And then I'm just looking there and the wife walks up and she's like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, I don't know. These are the two people that were at the stop sign driving. And uh, yeah, so like other people are walking past uncomfortably, but just minding their business. These people are yelling at a volume that could have been heard through most of the store. Ah! Now, it's one thing... That's that's how it is. It's one thing to have somebody insult you with a gesture like I did. It's another thing to feel compelled to get out of the vehicle and confront them. But what actually happened was they parked, came into the store, tracked me down for the sole purpose of a fucking loud, filth-laden confrontation... And they're just squawking and squawking and squawking. And the wife is trying to pull me away. And he says some other shit. And I just looked at them both and went, wow, way to perpetuate a stereotype. And I kept walking. And that pissed his ass off because he only heard the word stereotype. I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts. His ignorant ass does not know what the word perpetuate means. Probably. And uh, I'm still trying to walk away. And he's still trying to casually follow behind us at a gap of about 15, 20 feet. Right? And then he says this shit. You're lucky we're in a store with cameras or else you would have been had your ass beat already. Talk is cheap, motherfucker! I don't know if the way I'm speaking is giving you some inclination as to what this person's ethnicity might have been. Honestly, it don't matter what the ethnicity is. It's just this, this is definitely an ignorant person, no matter what skin color he is. Correct. So... He says that the wife is pulling on my coat. I slap her hand away. I turn around and I look at him and say, how about you Ben come suck on these nuts, motherfucker? (laughs) And then I turn around again and I keep walking. And he's still following me. And I keep looking over my shoulder. I'm like, okay, when's he going to run at me? When is this going to escalate? I've got the hand sanitizer ready. When is this shit going to make the news? We get to the front check stands. We get into a line. We don't know where they went but we know that they were being confronted by employees. So I get to the end of the check lane. <laughs> they get confronted. Yes. Well, they were the ones that were swearing and yelling, mm, making true. a fucking scene. I was, by all accounts, the victim in this. Uh, Yeah, you were. They or all, proposed target. They, one could say they almost, quote, hit you by their car at the stop sign, although not really hit you, but... Uh, and then they... They, I don't. Were they leaving the store? Do you know, like leaving a parking lot when they? As best as I could tell, they were just passing through. So yeah, I don't think they had any intention of buying anything. Because as I get to the end of the check lane, I look over my shoulder again, and there's the guy, and he's standing at the end of where the photo lab used to be. Now this guy, I'm going to put him at about 22, 23, maybe 25 at best. Mm, figures. And then the woman had walked past him to the front desk for whatever reason, and then he's just standing there, just. Hands in his pocket, just looking over like he's waiting for me to cross in front of him, like he's going to fucking hit me or something. 
And the best part is, hey, dumbass, you saw what door I walked in, and I purposely went to the registers at the opposite end of the fucking store by where the security posts up. So I had the wherewithal to arm myself with the hand sanitizer, which in his eyes probably would have blinded him. It would definitely would have stung his eyes to the point where he couldn't see very well. For yeah, it's like moments. getting fucking maced. But boo-hoo, you shouldn't have gotten my face if it goes down that way. So he's standing there and he's talking shit. And the cashier tells me, oh, that'll be eight something. I'm like, my peanut butter's only five thirty nine. What I'm like, how much is that hand sanitizer? She's like, uh, three dollars. I'm like, no, thank you. Takes out of my bag, deducts it. I pay with my card. <laughs> he's still standing there. People are starting to take notice because he's starting to talk shit again. And then my wife pays for her shit that she was buying separately on her card. And then we go to turn, and he turns like he wants to approach again. Well, he gets blocked by three or four employees, and he's running his mouth again like. The fuck is your problem? Staring at me like that and telling me to suck your cock. That shit is gay as hell. <laughs> and this other guy walks up to him and he's like, yeah, you guys better just go. Trust me, I'm paying for my peanut butter and leaving. No, no, we had already paid and we were deciding which door to go out of. But I almost was going to approach him. He's like, go ahead, call the fucking cops with your racist ass. Is he assuming because, again, I'm white and I have this haircut and because of recent events that I'm some fucking far-right white supremacist? I mean, or does he just hate all white people? And then, could I point out that he is really, really upset about this gesture that perceives I wanted him to suck my cock? It just means suck a dick. doesn't mean that you have to literally come and suck my dick or that I'm asking you to. So this guy is clearly both mad at white people and probably homophobic. I have touched a few nerves. Yeah, it sounds like it. And he and her are still yelling, and we're walking out of the store, and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, really? Like, all this because of one gesture, and presumably the follow-up gesture? Gotcha, bitch! So let me just work this out for you. Starting off at yelling at me out the window, he's engaging me, he's the aggressor, and he's shouting profanity, disorderly conduct. He follows me into the store and tracks me down harassment, easily, technically like stalk. I mean, you're basically hunting me down because you want to fucking fight because you're such a tough guy. And then the barrage of filth and following me is further proof of harassment and further disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, whatever you want to say. And the fucking coup de grace is when he tells me that if there weren't cameras, I'd be getting my ass beat. So that's terroristic threats. So you have committed... No fewer than four misdemeanors over a simple gesture. And it's like, dude, how fucking sad is your life? And pathetic that you have this much time and you're that triggered to come in to want to start a fucking fight. Like, do you you not care about going to jail? Because part of me almost wanted to be like, hey, on that officer tip, what's your PO's name? Maybe I used to work with him. Like, (laughs) I just wanted to keep fucking prodding him because I was all but laughing at him. (laughs) <laughs> now let's back it up to where they met me in the store between toys and sporting goods I don't know if he knows the lay of the land but I can tell you I was two aisles away from the fucking baseball bats yeah you would know the lay of the land I was one more aisle away from the fucking kettlebells and I was one more aisle away from the hockey sticks oh that would be my weapon of choice right there so let's review You followed somebody into a store with the intent to confront them, possibly assault them. You know nothing about them. I've already armed myself and know where other implements of violence are located. And if I really want to be a stinker about it, I'll walk your ass all the way back to the kitchen sets. I will open a box of knives and I will arm myself with one in each hand and be like, I bet you didn't bargain on this one, Spanky. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. At no time did it seem like this guy had any respect for his own mortality. And this is the part of the conversation I texted you about already, so you had some idea about this story. Mm-hmm, yeah. You're a what if bag. I was the conceal and carry type? Well, as, as I said in there, when you do the classes, they make it very clear at what point it is justifiable to draw the weapon or even flash the weapon. But they don't even recommend flashing the weapon unless you know your life's in danger. Don't pull it out unless you intend to use it. So, I mean, as hated as you can get, I have to say probably not best for you to carry. Probably not, but I would have had no problem unzipping my coat slowly without saying a word, 
reaching into my waistband and just going, hmm, how do you think this is going to end? You don't know me and I don't know you. But I don't see you reaching into your waistband right now. See so. now, if if you're in a situation like that, like I'm giving him you warning want, to yeah, fuck off. If you're giving him warning or giving, you can open carry in this state, so you could put your pistol in a holster on the outside of your jet, so everyone can see it, but nobody can say anything. And this guy will probably think twice, like, "Oh man, he's got a gun. I ain't gonna fuck with him." Again, no respect for his mortality. And I try to be fair, conversely, on the opposite side of the coin. I did not know who was in that vehicle or if they were armed and willing to shoot. They were more than happy to yell obscenities at me and try to engage me in violence. So who's to say this isn't some jack wagon who's fresh out of prison and high as a kite and is looking for trouble? You don't know these days because shootings just happen like that. There's dumb fucks that have illegal firearms all over the place and you never know who they are until you're staring at it and you're becoming the victim. Which is why I carry, because it's not just a weapon, it's a shield. It's a protection. Yeah. So then we get home, and we're kind of, you know, debriefing about this. And my fucking adrenaline was up, dude. I was like, holy shit. Dude, when my adrenaline gets pumping like that, man, like, my it starts to ache. Oh, no, no, no. I just get, like, really, really fucking excited, like a chihuahua would. No, I, there's been a couple of times where I've had situations where my adrenaline got really pumping. Not a situation like yours. Right. But, I mean, you know, things like when I'm driving or whatever, you know, just like a super close call or something like that. My adrenaline just starts getting pumped, and it actually hurts. Like, ouch. Well, like, there was the time when I was seeing The Dark Knight in theaters, and there were these kids that were talking, like, most of the movie. I think you told me about this. And I basically turned to them and I screamed... Shut the fuck up. And then I sat there waiting to see if they were going to do anything. And I'm not joking. I could both feel and see my heartbeat. It, my adrenaline kicked up so high. I was so enraged because it had been going on for most of an entire movie. And I finally lost my shit. Dark Knight or Batman? Dark Knight, the second one with Heath oh, Ledger. God, that's the one you don't want to be interrupted on, yeah. Right, because I've been waiting a long time to fucking see it. That one turned out with those kids confronting me in the fucking lobby and then saying, well, why are you us? We're just a couple of kids. So you only have two confrontational stories in a movie theater, and one of them doesn't really involve me. I was just a witness to it, but it was funny. Yeah. So, like, okay, one time we're sitting in the movie, where I went to a movie with, I was with Leadhead at the time, okay, and there's these, like, 14-year-old girls sitting, like, five, six rows in front of me, and they were chatting. Movie hadn't started yet. You yeah, know? go They're on. chatty, 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 being loud, laughing, and everything like that. I was like, okay, hopefully they'll quiet down and the movie starts. Well, about three rows in front of them, somebody yells out, would you please shut up? And one girl's just like, she stands up, and she's just, you know, she's like, that 14-year-old white girl. She goes, uh, who said that? And this dude stands up. Had to be seven feet tall. I mean, he was huge. And he's like, it was me. And she's like, oh. Okay, yeah, well, we can quiet down a little bit, you know, but thanks for being honest. And she sat down, oh. and they were quiet the rest of the day, yeah. rest of the time. The other time, a bunch of teenage kids, uh, you know, they were probably 16, 17, 18 years old, and uh, they were talking and, and laughing and everything like that. And I could hear some of what they were saying, and it was funny, you know, they were just joking. And the one gets up, and he's just like, hey, I'm going to go to a concession stand. He's yelling to everybody in the theater. There's probably like 50 people. Does anybody want anything? I was like, yeah, I'll take a Butterfinger. He's like, Butterfinger, got it. And he takes off and goes to the thing. I'm, I looked over at, I was with Leah still, and I was just like, I hope he doesn't get me one because I don't have any money to give to him. You know, like we, we used a credit card to pay for this. And he comes back with uh, the peanut, Butterfinger Crunch, you know, box. You know, the little pieces of the pe- BBs. Yeah, BBs. He comes back with that. He's like, they didn't have a kind of bar. I says, dude, I'm really sorry. I don't have any money to pay you back with. He's like, it's fine. And I'm like, Really? He's like, yeah, have fun. Enjoy. He went and sat down with his butt. I'm like, damn, that was really awesome. That's not really a confrontation. (laughs) That's just good luck. Well, that's not confrontation. But Whereas I I was at Showplace once, and some guys came in to talk shit to a guy that was over some girl. Turns out that the guy talking shit, the main guy, was the ex-boyfriend. Oh, for God's sake. Give up, dude. You're an ex. Long story short, he talks a bunch of shit. They get asked to leave. Then they sneak back in. And then he thumps on this motherfucker real quick, like, and they dash out the fire door. I was like, what a bizarre evening we're having. What the fuck? 
She she dumped you, or you dumped her. Either way, you're not. It no longer doesn't matter who she's with. Oh, I would imagine that she dumped him, judging by his reaction to the new dude. But either way. So wrapping up this fucking story of mine, we're in the kitchen, we're debriefing, and I says to the wife, I kind of really wish that I would have just walked towards him slowly and just like held up my hand to shake and then talked to him. And then we could have like hugged it out. Because there's clearly something deeper going on with somebody who acts like that. There's no way that's the first time he's pulled that shit. I can tell you that much. Nope, there isn't. And if that's his mom and she's basically both encouraging it but then telling him, come on, come on, like... Hang on. So, did he bail out of the thing? Or Sorry, did he bail out of the car and then you park quick to meet him in there? And then he started yelling, so you started yelling. Like, what the fuck? There's so many... I want to see the thing again through their eyes. That'd be kind of cool if you could do that. I would like to know what his reaction was and what the sequence of events were. But anyways, I felt bad. So, I met Target two days ago. And I park, and I'm with just the littles. And I open the door... And I said something, and I'm like, oh, shit, sorry, man. And and the guy is like, no, nah, man, you're cool. There's a black guy. He gets into this white SUV, the same type of white SUV as those people were in. And I didn't see who the driver was, and I get out, and I'm like, I'm so glad I'm wearing my bandana and not my mask, and I have a different jacket on, because holy shit, is that the same fucking guy? Could it be that small of a world that we are in the same fucking parking lot at the same fucking time again? Very well could be. Because I was this close to knocking on the window and be like, you didn't happen to get into, like, a shouting match with another guy in this same store exactly a week ago, did you, by chance? Because <laughs> I didn't want him to be like, is that you, motherfucker? Because I'm by myself and I have small children. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk around the car and then get back in. And if he's going to do anything to my car, I'm going to call the police. But it's like, I get the license plate. The point being is that, Jesus Christ, I feel a little bad. But not as bad as he should for being the one that really took it somewhere it didn't need to go. He could have been like, well, fuck you too. And then they drive away. And that's how that normally should end. That's how a normal person ends it. You you try to get the last word in before you go about your business. But if you are some guy with apparently some deep-seated issues that possibly are involving antisocial personality disorder, you get out of the car, you go into the store, you verbally accost someone, you threaten to kick their ass, and then you wait for them at the front of the store because you sincerely want to kick their ass. Maybe if I knew how to fight, fight, maybe I, I'd be different in situations like that, but I've always just been like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I got too much shit going on to actually look for confrontations. These are the times we're living in. People are on edge, oeuvreware. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And that's the end.